Good morning, good morning, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are, God is right there with you. Welcome to the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, August the 9th, 2020. Talk is cheap. From Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, 45 Church Street, Piedmont Town Springs, Alabama, 36471-251-564-2171. The church where everybody is somebody and Christ is the head. Reverend William Oliver is our pastor, Sister Joyce Oliver, our first lady, our clerk is Miss Lisa Starwis. Your Sunday school teacher is yours truly, Freddie C. Howard, the superintendent. Sunday school takes place every Sunday at uh, 9.30 a.m. Our worship services, since the COVID-19 virus, as a lot of churches have changed their schedules and their timing and broadcasting on uh, at the internet and Facebook and other uh, uh, media outlets. Our Sunday worship services on second Sunday, fourth Sunday, fifth Sundays at uh, 8.30 a.m. And this morning, which is the second Sunday uh, in August, August the night, our service will be at um, 8.30 a.m. in the morning, broadcast by Mr. Corey Robinson from the uh, church parking lot by Pastor Reverend Oliver bringing the message. The lesson topic for today, August the 9th, 2020, is Talk is Cheap, Hearing and Doing. The devotional reading is coming from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, 26 to 31st verse. The background scripture is James, the first chapter, 19 to 27. And the printed text is from James, the first chapter, 19 to the 27th verse. Let us pray. Only wise God, we lift up our hearts in thanksgiving for your wise counsel. You have been our answer even before we had the question. You have been our guide even before we knew we were lost. We thank you. We thank you, you know, for being what we needed at every point in our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. We hope you had a good week, and we will begin with the uh, weekly, uh, daily, um, home, daily Bible reading. Um, this is Leviticus, the 19th chapter, verses 13 through 18. Impartial relationship with one another. Impartial relationship with one another. All right, the 13th chapter, I mean the 19th chapter, 13th verse, and it reads, Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired should not, shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. In other words, somebody come and work for you, pay them that day, that hour that they finish the time. Do not hold their wages overnight. And let them go home unpaid. All right, the 14th verse. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall fear thy God, I am the Lord. All right. When we're talking about blind, um, I believe they're talking about physically blind. Um, or they may be talking about spiritual, but I believe they're talking about physically blind. Don't curse them or block their way, okay? Verse number 14, righteous actions demanded. Number 15, you shall not do, you shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect, thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in Righteousness shall thou judge thy neighbors. Let's read that again because I don't quite understand that. It's not coming through as I would like it to have. Let me read it again. I'd like to be clear in my mind as well as yours. You shall not, you shall do no righteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shall thou judge thy neighbor. Um, I believe that it's saying um, 
be fair uh, in your judgment. In fact, you shouldn't be judging at all, but be fair in your assessment of the rich as well as the poor, um, of their potential perhaps. Maybe that will come in clear there as we uh, continue to study. All right. Verse number 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tail bearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Tail bearer. So by telling lies, I guess. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tail bearer among thy neighbors. In other words, um, among thy people, neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy blood, blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Verse number seventeen: Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt surely rebuke thy neighbor and not allow sin upon him. Okay, verse number eighteen: Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself I am the Lord impartial relationship with one another um, that word impartial do not be showing favoritism do not be uh, perhaps that sums it all up do not be favoring the rich over the poor uh, being undue harshly on the poor, uh, throwing stumbling blocks in the ways of the blind. Uh, in other words, be fair and be just. As Jesus Christ, God Almighty, is fair and just with you and, and, and righteously doing you, you do the same thing with your fellow man, your brothers and sisters, no matter who they are. Uh, impartial relationship. In other words, don't be favoring good, bad, and ugly on them. Just do what's right toward them. All right, let's look at Tuesday, August the 4th. Praise for steadfast faith in persecution. This will come from Second Thessalonians, the first chapter, 3 through 5, and 11 and 12. Praise for steadfast faith in persecution. Second Thessalonians, the first chapter, Verses 3-5. through five. Verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith groweth exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all toward each other abounded. All right. Verse number 4. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. They're going through some trials and tribulations, such circumstances, uh, and persecution. And um, But praise for steadfast faith in, in when you're being persecuted. Look at verse number four. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all of your persecution and tribulation that ye endure. Verse number five, comfort in persecution. This, this is manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. All right, which ye also suffer. All right. Okay. Praise in steadfast faith and persecution. All right. Praise for you, you going through something and being steadfast in your faith during your persecution. Uh, you're talking to the church of uh, at, at Thessalonia. Okay. Let's look at um, the poor bless the rich criticize. Luke the sixth chapter verses twenty through twenty six. No, there's a couple other verses that I need to read out of Second Thessalonians. That's verse number 11 and 12. Let's go to verse number 11 and 12. We're still talking about praise for steadfast faith and persecution. Verse number 11. Wherefore also we pray always for you, 
that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasures of his goodness and the work of faith with power. The work of faith, work of faith with power. The work of faith, work of faith with power. All right, let's look at verse number um, 12, and it reads, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the love of Jesus Christ. All right. Continued faith and endurance and, and being patient in, in, in your persecution. And when you're going through something, um, say for instance, like this pandemic, um, the things that you're going through and the trials and tribulation that are put upon you because of the, the virus, you still continue to pray and you're being persecuted by uh, this disease and this whatever you're going through, you still be faithful, you still be patient, you still do the things that God wants you to do. Praise for steadfast faith and persecution. In other words, you give praise, you give praise to people that are going through something and they still continue to hang on and do what's right. That's a powerful word. That is very powerful indeed. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be glorified in you. Oh, look at that. That the name of, of Jesus Christ, God Almighty, our Father, be glorified in you. When they see you doing things and you're under pressure and, and you're having trials and tribulations and you're still doing the work of God. All right. The poor bless, the rich criticize. Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 20 through 26. The poor bless, the rich criticize. Criticize. Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 20 through 26. The Beatitudes is found also in Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 3 through 12. And it reads, verse 20. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, this is Jesus speaking, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Verse 21. Verse 21. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Number 22. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and then and when they shall separate you from their company and shall report you and cast you out cast out your name as what as evil for the son of man's sake. He's speaking about things that people would do to you for Christ. All right. Verse number 23, Rejoice ye in the day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great as heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. In other words, when they treat you like they did the prophets, and doing bad things to you, dogging you out, lying on you, um, criticizing you, um, bringing harm to you for Jesus, just like they did to the prophets. All right. Number 24. But woe unto you, but woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. When you're rich and wealthy, you are treated and honored and, and kowtowed to and bowed down to and favored and all kinds of ways down here on earth. You have received your reward, so to speak, when you're rich like that. You you have to be some kind of person special uh, to, to not allow the riches or your riches to, to uh, be ingratiated by others and be uh, folks fawning over you and stuff like that. You have to be a really special person to not allow those things to interfere with you and be for you to be uh, really impartial with people when you're rich when you're rich alright number 20 uh, 